with more rain showers and maybe a thunderstorm Friday. The high only around 55 degrees. Your life, your music, we're KLEK 102.5 FM. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Natalie Powell. The British Foreign Secretary has summoned the Chinese ambassador over allegations a former employee of the UK's Hong Kong consulate was tortured in China and detained for 15 days. South Australia has issued its highest bushfire danger rating, catastrophic, with heat and winds threatening to spread the fires. And the EU, Russia and Ukraine are holding preparatory talks ahead of a meeting about gas supplies for next year. Hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? John 14 and 2. Do you have a room in the house of our father? I know I do. I refuse to allow Jesus' sacrifice to be in vain for me. The King James Version said in my father's house are many mansions. Can you imagine a house so big that it can hold many mansions? I want one of those mansions in heaven. Jesus is not somewhere chilling, brothers and sisters. He's preparing a place for all of us who have given our lives to him. I pray that all of us will have our own address in heaven and we will worship with one another for eternity but in the meantime we need to work so that jesus has more places to prepare for more people we need to recruit new neighbors everywhere we go jesus is the word so when he said that he was going to prepare a place he meant that we don't have to wonder what he's doing when he's not with us and hasn't returned yet he's preparing the place for our arrival all we have to do is answer the call i can't wait to get into our new digs in heaven and i pray i see you there may god continue to bless each and every one of us amen it's 8.02. KLK 102.5 FM. Good morning to you on your Wednesday. It's November 20th, 2019. This is your Wednesday morning Bible study. We have Reverend Dr. Greg Ota in the Good studio morning. with us. And today we are going to revisit a topic which we've done before. It's obey God or man. So we're going to talk a little bit about obedience. So let's get right into it. This is your Wednesday morning Bible study on KLK 102.5 FM. Good morning. Let us pray this morning. Our Father and our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You created the heavens and the earth. You created man and put him on earth, and you gave him dominion over every creation. Father, help us to understand who we need to obey, you that created us or man that you created alongside with us. Help us this day with your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So obedience... Is we hear it, we think it's not for us. We think it's for somebody else. There are rewards for obedience. There are consequences for disobedience. So I wrote down obey in Greek, hupakao, which means to listen attentively by implication to heed or conform to a command or authority. This word conveys the idea of actively following a command. It's not a one thing, it's not a one time thing. I obey for two minutes, the next five minutes I relax. No. There's no choice in the matter. It is to be done whether one agrees with it or not. That's obedience. Now look at submit. Submit says the biblical word submit comes from the Greek word hupaiko, which means to yield, to passively surrender to an authority. Submission is similar to obedience. But in this case, one might question what is being commanded. Submission is voluntary. So for me to submit is, is my choice. Obedience, I don't have a choice. I do what is what I'm told, or I don't. So our first scripture to explain this a little further is Luke eleven twenty eight, And it reads, But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. So it's not just in hearing, it's in keeping. So if the Lord, and I use this, it's very simple. If you heard from the Lord, either directly or through a man or woman of God that says, go outside at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. It doesn't matter what's going on outside. Go outside because God said to go outside. Why? He knows where I am. He knows what I need. He knows what I've asked him for. He's not going to tell me how he's going to give me what I asked him for. He's just going to give me a command. Can I tell you folks this? God's commands don't make sense in the flesh. If, if you're looking for it to make sense in the flesh, it's not. You're going to be disobedient. Second scripture, Acts 5.29. It reads, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, 
we ought to obey God rather than man. Okay. Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than man. Now, some of us grew up in different parts of the world. Our parents are different, different from one another. By race, country, gender, whatever. But we grew up on different sides of the mountain. So the, the instruction I'm going to give you is going to be based on my experience. But if what I'm telling you to do negates the word of God, don't do what I say. Why? Because I have no heaven or hell to put you in. God is the only one who has that capacity. So Peter and the them said, we must obey God rather than men. Because he knows the end from the beginning. Third scripture, Titus 3.1. And it reads, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, and to be ready to every good work. Okay, so here's um, this scripture. Let me explain it a little bit. He said, remind them to be submitted to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, not every bad work. Like now listen if the person over you is a man or woman of God and they give you instructions and the instructions is based on the word of God God said to obey them so every authority in place was put there by God good or evil God put them there for a reason but yet he told us we would rather obey God than man so if they are telling you to do something that is ungodly be careful be careful. Now, one of the things that we don't do very well because of pride, we think this thing is wrong and we become foolish. We go, <laughs> we go confront the authority that God has put over our lives instead of telling God what is going on with the authority he put over our lives. We go to them directly and we go to them the wrong way. We are likely to get cursed by God because we Usurped authority. Now, here's what we should do, and I'm going to get off this. The person that is over you is telling you to do the things you know is wrong. Go tell God. Pray for that person. Go tell God and see what God does. Don't take laws into your hands. Matthew 6, 24. And it reads, no man can serve two masters, mm -hmm. for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Yeah, leave that up there. He said, no man. So, you are not an exception. Hmm. Everything you're doing is towards money, not towards God. The, the God of money, called mammon, is the God of wealth in the Babylonian kingdom. It opposes God. He doesn't like God. That spirit tells you you don't have enough. So you cannot serve that God of you don't have enough <laughs> and serve the God that says I have enough for you. You will violate the rules of the other one. So if you serve God, you can have as much money as you need, not want. If you serve mama, you will never have enough money and you violate the rules of God. So which one do you obey? Okay, you obedience in this case, go ahead. Oh, you obey God. You obey God because he commands even the money. He but if you, if you turn to money, you never have enough. Well, you know, he also made the money. He also made the money. Amen. So, <laughs> uh, if we dedicate our lives to God, money will come when we need it. Brother Leganzi, you have some experience in what I'm talking about. Well, it, it goes back to, you know, what you talked about tithing. Um, mm -hmm. When you give God what is his, you will find that uh, you won't be broke. And from my personal experiences, mm -hmm. whenever I tithe, yeah, there's times when the money gets low. There's mm -hmm. even times when my personal bank account gets overdrawn. But there's still money coming around the corner because of me remaining Being faithful. Obedient. Amen. So this thing with God, folks, is serious. God is real. <laughs> as real as you hear my voice, God is real. Because he's done some things in your life. Even you who's listening. 
who not sure if you should be in church or not. He's done some things in your life that you have no explanation for. God well, did it. Well, if you if you're listening to this broadcast, or if mm-hmm. you're watching this broadcast on our Facebook Live, that's proof right there because uh, won't get into the story. But I'll just basically say this station wasn't supposed to be here, considering um, my personal and financial situation. We shouldn't be here. <laughs> Amen. But we are mm-hmm. because God made it possible. Now, uh, for me, I was born and raised in Nigeria. I shouldn't be here, but I'm here by the grace of God. Romans 13, 1 through 5. And it reads, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Every soul. For there is no power but of God. Mm -hmm. The powers that be are ordained of God. Mm -hmm. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, Mm -hmm. and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Mm -hmm. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Mm -hmm. Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Mm -hmm. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. Mm -hmm. But if thou do that which is evil, be be afraid. afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath, Upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs to be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Okay. In Ephesians, we just finished Ephesians in New Life. Yes. It talked about slaves, right? Mm-hmm. To be obedient to their masters. Not by eye service. And you know, that's a controversial one. We may have to do a Bible study just on that one. Okay. On that topic. Okay. I, I don't mind doing it. See, we, 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 we often misinterpret scriptures. So the slave he's talking about is the one that, because of the, the laws then, you can enter into slavery by owing money. Okay, but there's still justice well, in slavery. I'm so slavery. glad they don't have that law now. Huh? I'm so glad they don't have that law now. <laughs> I'd be doing life in, I would be doing life in prison just on student loans no, alone. No, you won't. No, you won't. <laughs> it don't work the way you think it does. <laughs> Some people go into this thing voluntarily. They're able to work, so they say, let me some money so I can solve my problems. I'll work for you. That's a form of slavery. But let me get off of that. The authority God is talking about is the pastor in your church. He's not perfect. He's just a man who's trying to do the will of God by leading God's people. He is going to make some mistakes. Pray for him. Don't go against him. Don't talk about him. Tell God. And God will correct him. So he can lead you correctly. He or she can lead you correctly. Here's what we do. I've said it before. We take laws into our own hands. Well, we used to do it this way. We are used to doing it that way. Well, there's a reason why God sent another person. Instead of the last person you were with. This one has some ideas or things God has shown them. Follow them. Don't criticize them. Their job is to lead you the right way. If they're not, tell God. Matthew 22, 20, and 21. And it reads, Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children. Are you sure you're in the right place? Matthew 20, 20. No, no. Matthew 22, 20. Matthew 22. Okay, Matthew 22, 20. Okay. Matthew, I 20. can explain that, but okay, well, that's Matthew, not today's scripture. All right. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Mm-hmm. And the 20th and the 21st. Amen. All right, here we go. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the thing that are things that are God's. Okay. So when okay. Uh, when you go to church, there's a decorum for church. It is the house of God where his angels are. When you go to the club, that's the club. There are things you do in the club you don't do in the church. I would know this. <laughs> there are things you do in the church you don't do in the club or they'll throw you out. I, w- I know that as well. Okay, so what people do is you take your street, uh, whatever, and bring it into the church. Church is a sacred place for souls. It's a hospital for souls. The souls we are looking for are in the club. Hello. So don't bring your club stuff into the church. Don't bring the dressing into the church. Don't bring all that garbage into the church. Leave it at the club. 
That's what Jesus is saying here. Whose inscription is on this thing? They say Caesar. Well, give Caesar what is his and give God what is his. Amen? Because we just talked about authority. Caesar was the king, right? Yes, yes, sir. He was the one in authority, so his inscription was on the money. Well, let the money go to Caesar. Let the praises go to God. That's what this means. So we 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 want to obey man. We want to please people who are going to die just like we are. They have no heaven or hell to put us in. So we we'll rather do it so they can smile on us while God is frowning on us. Because we are directly disobeying him. He has given us instructions, but we choose to do it because man said not to do what God said. This is a this is a rich teaching, folks. We need to consider the things we do and how we do them. Who are we doing it for? Am I doing it to please man or am I doing it to please God? What has God said about that situation you are still involved in? What has God said? Are you doing it? it despite God's instructions? Let me quit. Matthew 7, 13 and 14. And it reads, Enter ye straight in at the gate. Mm -hmm. For wide is the gate. Broad is the way that leadeth to, to destruction, destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Uh -huh. And the next verse 14. is, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there that be that find it. Okay, here's a simple way to do this. The highway to heaven, if I may call it that, is a two-lane road. So you got to drive carefully. Amen. The one that leads to hell and destruction is a six-lane six highway going one way, 12 lanes. You get on any lane. You can speed as much as you want to. But the one to heaven is narrow, so I got to be careful how I live this life so I can get there. And the only way to stay on this narrow road, so somebody described it this way, is steps to heaven is highway to hell. Hmm. <laughs> steps is I take one step and then I take the other one and it's purposeful. Highway, I just put it on cruise control. I'm on my way. Folks, be careful. Deuteronomy 26, 18 and 19. We're almost some out of time. And the Lord hath avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people as he hath promised thee, and thou that thou shouldest keep all his commandments, mm -hmm. and to make thee high above all nations. Above all nations. Which he hath made uh -huh. in praise uh -huh. and in name uh -huh. and in honor, uh -huh. and that thou mayest be an holy people unto the Lord thy God, as he hath spoken. Okay, so in my obedience, he places me above certain things. Listen, folks. In my obedience, do I attain that? Not by my struggle, not by my height, not by my color, not by my education, but in my obedience. Amen. In my obedience to him, not to person, to him. They say promotion doesn't come from the east nor the west, not from the south. It comes from God. So if you want true promotion, not the one you mechanically engineered, obey God's command. Amen. Amen. If this has been a blessing to you, we pray you continue to turn, tune in. Brother Leganzi, do we have any shout out? Uh, we do. A uh, shout out to Amanda Donovan. Appreciate mm -hmm. you for checking in on our Facebook Live. Feed. Amen. Amen. Would you lead them in a sinner's prayer for those who don't know Christ? And our sinner's prayer is as follows. Mm. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I come to you today as a sinner. I come to you today as a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. Wash me with your blood. Make me a child of God. Make me a child of God. I believe you died for me. I believe you died for me. And on the third day you and rose again. And on the third day you rose again. That I might be justified. That I might be justified. I believe I'm born again. I believe I'm born again. Thank you Jesus for saving me. Thank you Jesus for saving me. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, congratulations. You are now saved. Find a Bible believing, Bible teaching church, and fellowship with a body of fellow believers. Amen. Can I pray now? Yes. Father in heaven, we thank you for what you have imparted into our lives this day. Thank you for all our listeners. Thank you for those that are going to listen in the future. Bless us to be in obedience. Baptize us with the spirit of obedience. To hear your word and obey them per time. We we'll give you praise, we we'll give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, consider sowing a seed into this ministry called the radio station. It's not for profit. KLEKFM.org. 
You'll find all the information there. Come by the station, 1411 Franklin Street. Amen. God bless you. All right. And of course, this is our Gospel Wednesday. We got great gospel music all day long up to 8 o'clock p.m. tonight. And also, join me at 12 o'clock noon. I will go live on Facebook from Barn Hills as several of the candidates for circuit judge will be doing a forum. And so, definitely check that out because this is election season. So, even though we're not going to tell you who to vote for, definitely study all of the candidates, all of the issues, and exercise your right to vote. All right, we're going to get up out of here for just a moment. We'll be back at the top of the hour with Community Conversations. You guys have a great and blessed day. This is Kate, L.E.K., 102.5 FM. <laughs>